of the Hill CDC. We are so excited to have you all here tonight. We're just going to give a couple of more minutes uh, and then we're going to get into this very lively um, meeting that we have scheduled for you this evening. We are streaming to Facebook. Uh, so please, uh, if you are a um, if you are on Facebook, please share it out so that people know that this meeting is happening and so that everyone can be informed about what's happening in the historic Hill District. With that, uh, we are going to, by the way, our um, Facebook is Hill District, uh, is facebook.com slash My Hill District. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms at My Hill District. Um, why don't we go on ahead and jump into it? Uh, first, why don't we do some introductions, Jordan? I'm going to let you kick it off and then pass the baton to another team member. Thank you, Marimba. As I said, I'm Jordan Smith, Programs and Policy Coordinator here at the Hill CDC. I see my colleague on the line, Ray Bowman. I'm going to kick it to you, Ray. Can Ray, Ray, do you hear me? I don't know. Maybe you're muted. Oh, you're muted, Ray. There you go, Ray. There we go. I was going to say, I can't be, can't unmute myself. Uh, hi, my name is Ray Bowman. I am the uh, real estate coordinator here for the um, Hill District. And um, I'm excited to share with you a lot of the uh, developments that we have on the real estate side um, for the Hill District. Um, I don't know. Uh, who else is on for the? I believe Donna is here as well. To look through. Wanna phone a friend. It looks like uh, maybe Donna is here. So, popcorn Donna. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm Donna Bauer. I'm senior fund development officer at the Hill CDC. Um, working on New Granada Square and raising some money for that, about, uh, along with a lot of other things. So it's nice to see everyone. All righty. Thank you, Donna. And thank you, team. Uh, we are going to jump right into it now. Um, we will go over a few ground rules uh, just so that everyone is clear. And we'll also, of course, cover a very healthy agenda. So I want to do a congratulations to Mayor uh, Ganey and his appointees, programmatic and real estate updates, DRP and development activities meeting presentation from the August Wilson House will be this evening. Uh, and of course, we'll have Lower Hill updates uh, as well. And then of course, questions and answers. And many of you may have come tonight for the Hill trivia, which will be a question that we'll throw out there and whoever you know gets back to us quickest, they, quickest, they may get a prize if they get back to us quickest. quickest. So stay online so that you can um, see if you're gonna be the winner of Hill trivia tonight. All right, so a little bit of housekeeping. We will take limited Q&A after each agenda item, so don't feel like completely pressed, but we do like to keep it somewhat limited uh, during the middle of the meeting so that people um, you know, have an opportunity to get through everything on the agenda. Sometimes we have presenters as we do tonight, so we like to be mindful of that. And then of course, please feel free to drop, drop questions here in the chat or on Zoom. Uh, we have uh, individuals monitoring that will either respond in chat or we will read it live. Uh, also, and you can use the raise your hand feature uh, as well. Uh, we will take those questions during a specific time period. If you want to ask your question live, please leave a note in the chat and we will unmute you at the appropriate time. And then of course we can dis disagree with respect. Uh, we just, you know, just like to remind our community that we are a community. And so even though, you know, our spirits run high because we love this neighborhood, uh, we like to do that in a respectful manner. All right, so let's get into some congratulations here. We do want to congratulate uh, Mayor Ed Ganey, who is uh, the first African-American uh, mayor uh, for our city of Pittsburgh. Uh, this is his swearing in for him and his uh, beautiful wife, Michelle Ganey. Uh, and we just wanted to be sure to congratulate uh, Mayor Ganey, who was sworn in officially on January 3rd. We also wanna recognize some of the staff appointments. Some may look a little familiar to you. Felicity Williams, uh, who is highlighted here, uh, um, was formerly with the Hill CDC as programs and policy manager and special assistant to me, and um, would oftentimes be coordinating and facilitating our community meetings. So congratulations to Felicity, who has been appointed as the assistant chief of staff 
uh, for Mayor Ganey. And then of course there he is with uh, Representative Jake Wheatley who has departed from the state uh, to as our state representative to join the, the administration of Mayor Ganey as the chief of staff. And then we have Jake Pollack who is deputy mayor uh, as well as Lisa Frank who is the chief administration officer. So we do wanna congratulate these appointees. There have been some names since uh, to economic development uh, as well as to city planning. So we wanna recognize those appointees as well. Congratulations to all. All right, so first and foremost, let's talk a little bit about the uh, Greater Hill District Master Plan update and adoption. As many of you know, the Hill CDC and the rest of the Hill District community have um, had a, a comprehensive land use and development plan that really highlights the quality of life of our neighbor, the quality of life needs of our neighborhood, as well as the land use needs of our neighborhood for, um, for since 2011, since September of 2011. It is best in breed. Many people use it as a model to create plans in their own neighborhoods, and we're really proud of it. The thing that we uh, we're not able to do in 2011, we are trying to do now. Uh, and it was simply because the city mechanisms were not there yet. And so we are really excited that we are now in the process of um, master plan, the master plan update and adoption. Okay, so what is adoption? It is when the city formally adopts your plan and that they use that plan to review all incoming development in the neighborhood. So that's very exciting because we believe that we wanna pivot from having to advocate for every single uh, policy change or every single goal for the neighborhood to the city and other, um, in, and other uh, city departments also supporting uh, our goals by having it codified as a part of the city's plan. So we're very excited about that. The work happens in the form of action teams. And so the expectations for the action teams are to work, direct or conduct, draft, present, uh, and then present proposals back and then of course to finalize. And so we um, are getting towards the, um, we are getting towards the, um, the end of the action team process and we are moving towards the finalization process. And so we're very excited about that. Uh, if anyone who is interested, you can see uh, on the next slide that there will be contact information. Uh, we also do, um, I see Mayor Ganey just said that uh, he, he's tuning in via Facebook, so I want to give him a shout out. Shout out to you, um, Mayor Gaynor. Thanks for tuning in. If you have questions, you can drop them right there in our chat, uh, or if you would like to make comments, I do want to just acknowledge his presence and his reaching out to us to let us know he was tuning in. All right, so master plan action teams. So we do have digital office hours. Uh, you can reach uh, Osei Akinloten, who has been staffing this effort alongside Derek Dawson and, and other city planning employees, as well as our consultants. And so, um, and when I say our, I mean our communities, but you can have digital office hours here. If you'd like to meet with Osei, um, you can reach out to her. Uh, to schedule a time to come in uh, during these digital office hours and her information is listed here. All right, so we can't get into all of the details of the planning that's happening um, right now because it's just too much, but we do have a bi-monthly planning plans meeting. And so the intent of this meeting is to update the Hill District neighborhood on all of the different planning activities that are happening uh, because we have a lot. We have the Befford Choice plan, plan that's happening, which will transform uh, the Middle Hill District. Uh, it will be over 400 units of new housing, uh, perhaps up to 600 units of new housing. It will include transportation and uh, we are also doing the transportation and mobility plan. We are going to be doing planning process around Center Hellman, which is the grocery store site. And then of course, as I mentioned, we have the Hill District Planning Action Teams. Uh, so with that, please mark your calendar and register for February 15th at 5.30. PM, we will be having our Hill District Plans Update community meeting. All right, and you can register at hilldistrict.org slash register. That's available to you now. So we thought it'd be appropriate to give you a little bit of an update on the Befford Choice uh, planning process. Again, this is a planning process that um, we are picking up um, from into moving from planning to implementation. Uh, 
about four years ago now, in, in 2016, HUD awarded a Choice Neighborhoods Planning Grant to the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh, and, um, and that planning process was completed. Right there's an entire plan around the transformation of the Middle Hill District called um, called the Bedford Choice Plan, also referred to as Bedford Connects, the transformation plan. That plan was completed uh, as a comprehensive neighborhood transformation plan, again named Bedford Connect in 2018. Now that plan was submitted um, to um, excuse me there was an there was an implementation effort to apply for additional funding. Uh, for the implementation of the choice plan that was envisioned. Uh, unfortunately, we did not get the first um, funding, which was $30 million, um, but we have, we're have we going after it again as a community with the city of Pittsburgh and the housing authority. Um, the developer that has been selected for that is Truck Development and their planning arm is uh, WRT for this particular process. Obviously, there is still a lot of work that has to be done, but this is a critically important plan um, because it could bring uh, capital directly from the federal government into the neighborhood. Uh, in addition to that, you have to match the fund funding that comes from the federal government through uh, private sources, through other institutional sources, to through community partners, through other arms of government, and it brings a, a lot of capital into the neighborhood, which if community led and community connected can be transformative. And so this is a call to action to you to stay engaged. This is a call to action to you to get engaged, to continue to come to our meetings, to stay connected to the Hill CDC. You can follow us on all social media platforms. You can come to our office. There are lots of ways to stay connected, but this is a very important process for our neighborhood. So uh, I won't go too much into a deep dive, but I do want you to know that you can learn more about this um, planning process as well on February 15th at 5.30 p.m. Um, at the Hill District Plans meeting, okay? With that, I'm gonna pause and ask if there are any questions that anyone would like to go over um, or discussion on the planning items that I just covered or the announcements that we just made. If you could raise your hand or jap, drop your name in chat because you are probably muted. Okay. All right, I will assume that there are no questions. Yeah, there are no hands or no chat right now. All right, thanks, Jordan. If there aren't any questions throughout the time, everyone just grab me in the chat. Thank you. I can't see everybody, so thanks for that. All right. Let's jump into some other updates that are happening in the community. Um, you may have heard that UPMC has opened a COVID uh, vaccination clinic uh, on Center Avenue at 1846 Center Avenue uh, at the grocery store complex. Um, this initiative um, has been uh, essentially put into place to try to reduce the racial um, disparities around uh, COVID vaccinations. You can make an appointment at vaccine.upmc. Dot com and we want to share a little bit of statistic, uh, a, a few statistics with you. So according to the Atlantic, this is the COVID racial data tracker, which you can find on the Atlantic's website. Nationwide, black people have died at 1.4 times the rate of white people, okay? You can see the statistics here for, for every 124 um, white person, people of color and African-Americans are uh, dying at a higher rate. And largely that is because the vaccination rates are not as high. Uh, there are probably a broad, other, a broad range of other um, factors involving that, like uh, comorbidities and things of that nature. But the reality is, is that um, this clinic was put into place to try to address and uh, some of these core issues that we're seeing in our community and throughout the nation. So we do you encourage you to um, share the news that there is a COVID vaccination right here in clinic right here in the Hill District neighborhood, right on Center Avenue. Uh, you can um, you can make an appointment and go in and um, use utilize the services that they have there. Additionally, people should be aware that there is a service called Curative that is a roving service where you can do COVID testing. Um, they are oftentimes at the Energy Innovation Center. You can find them at COVID, excuse me, at curative.com. 
So we don't have a slide for that, but I think it's important because um, while everyone is not vaccinated, everyone should be getting tested if they feel that they're sick at all. And this is a very quick te uh, test where you get back um, the results on your phone. Okay, let me ask if there are any questions on the COVID um, vaccination clinic or anything else related to that item. All right, well, let's move on. All right, so we want to share exciting news that Salem's Market and Grill announced the signing of their lease agreement with the URA for their new, lo new location in the Hill District at the Center Hellman Shopping Plaza. Salem's expects to open uh, op, um, open on in August of 2022. Now you may recall that this plan um, uh, happened uh, in part because the city and the Urban Redevelopment Authority and the Hill District partnered to do a community review process where every resident had an opportunity to vote just like you will tonight for the August Wilson plan. Um, and to give your input. And there were several um, proposals that were reviewed uh, and voted on. And so this plan rose to the top and we are really excited to see that that lease has been fortified in the, um, uh, with the URA and that they are moving towards opening. I'm sure you will be hearing lots more from Salem's Market and Grill very soon uh, relative to the grocery store and we will keep you apprised of any updates that we have, but we wanted to make sure that you were aware of that progress. Let's talk a little bit about New Granada Square. So New Granada Square, as you know, is the redevelopment of the New Granada Theater block uh, in the heart of the Hill District. And we want you to know that even though you can't see a lot happening on the outside of the building, there's a lot happening on the inside of the building. So the construction teams have moved to a critical phase of, uh, of uh, hazardous materials being removed from the building, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, the Hill CDC hired an MBE contractor to remediate uh, the last of the asbestos pa paving the way for the new functions planned for the building. Uh, you all know that this uh, building from prior meetings will be anchored by the University of Pittsburgh's Community Engagement Center on the top floor. It will have a multi-purpose event space on the second floor, and it will have a food hall and a small black box theater on the first floor. So we are uh, speedily moving towards the redevelopment of the historic building, as well as an adjacent office building. But we'll talk about the adjacent office building at our next quarterly community meeting. For now, we'll just remind you uh, of the amazing construction that's happening on Center Avenue, um, right in the heart of the, of the corridor between the Black Beauty and uh, the Credit Union. Uh, this is the rear, this is a rear shot uh, of the building. And you can see that it's gone vertical considerably now. Uh, this is uh, the New Granada Square Apartments and Retail. This is the Center Avenue view. And you can see here that this is 40 residential units with preference for artists and creatives, uh, five commercial spaces for retail businesses. And anyone who is interested in the retail businesses, you can register at hilldistrict.org slash HD rising for commercial space. Now, this is the external facade of the building. Um, you all know that this was inspired by a, um, a design from Miss Charlotte Ka, a Hill District artist. So we're very proud of Miss Charlotte Ka. She is one of the principals of Mocha Art Gallery, and she was uh, commissioned by the Hill CDC to work with our architect to design the facade of this building. Uh, so this is what ultimately you will be seeing. Uh, this is an illustrative, illustrative rendering. So obviously the actual building uh, will look, look a little different, but this is pretty close. And we're really excited to see this building coming online. For those of you who are interested in renting um, uh, at this building, please just give us a couple of more months. We'll be publishing a link at the latest then, uh, and it probably will come sooner. Again, we are targeting artists and creatives because as you know, we are working on building a, com a commercial and cultural corridor, specifically lifting up uh, black arts and black culture. All right, with that, I am going to um, ask uh, Ray Bowman from our team to talk a little bit about the Hill District 100 um, rehabs that are happening. Uh, I'll have him go over the land list property and then I'll go over Shani. All 
Okay. Are you muted, Ray? I have been unmuted. Um, okay, there you go. So yes, as of, um, I believe it was December 23rd, just in time for Christmas, we have sold 522 uh, landless place um, in the Upper Hill to a buyer who is a lifelong resident of the Hill District. Um, that that project had been under construction for a while. We were, um, you know, able to work with our contractor through delays caused primarily by um, by COVID and just the, how, um, you know, that the effect that that has on our on the contractors that um, we are working for. Again, we are committed to working with um, contractors. Um, in the neighborhood and, you know, providing them the opportunities to work with us and sort of work with them and on improving their skills and, um, and developing these prop properties for us. So a lot of times, um, you know, those kinds of contractors are more vulnerable to uh, things like global pandemics. So um, it was a long time coming, but we were really excited um, by the results. Um, we have uh, some before and after shots uh, for you, you can see um, the uh, the quality of the of the project here. So um, three three bedrooms. Um, the uh, buyer that we sold it to needed them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, so she's really excited to um, be able to occupy this space and just um, in time for the holidays as well. So. Um, this has been one of our one of our big successes throughout the year, and um, we are looking to expand that to into our Shawnee properties. Um, it'll be similar level of finish. You see, we uh, you know we had the white um, walls and sort of the the light flooring and um, kind of the same finishes and countertops and uh, level the high level of quality. Um, to uh, this was. That was a single attached house um, and Shawnee is four properties. Um, and uh, Marimba, I think wants to tell you about those. Sure, no, I, I, Ray, you, you did a great job. I don't know that I need to cover much more. I just wanna highlight the amazing um, uh, sell price here is $85,000. These are row homes uh, for a small family uh, that, you know, it could be a starter home, it could be a uh, downsized home, uh, it could be a home for uh, an individual who's maybe a creative, who um, needs some studio space in the basement, uh, but the, the sale price is amazing and it is for people who earn uh, at or below 50% of the area median income. Uh, so these are intentionally mm -hmm. priced extremely affordably uh, and we have been able to secure considerable support. We are still working on the external um, on the external portion of the project. However, I would not advise that anyone wait. If you are interested, uh, these projects are near completion. Uh, and so we just want to remind you that if you are interested, you do need to be on the Hill District 100 list at www.hilldistrict.org slash Hill District 100. Um, and so it's really important that you are on that list if you are interested in qualifying um, for, for this home or any of these row homes. There are only four. Uh, now we are working on some other homes, but uh, they, take, they take time. They take time, energy, and effort. And, and quite frankly, they take a lot of capital. Uh, so I would not advise that you wait uh, if you are interested in buying in the Hill District. The window to for affordability, as most of you know, is uh, shorter than we most of us are willing to, uh, able to get our heads around at this stage. So please do not delay if you're interested. Sign up for the Hill District 100 program. Okay. All right. I think I have a question in the chat. Um, let me get through this portion and then I'll come back uh, to that question. Uh, and then Allison, if you could clarify what are there pictures of what? Um, so Hill District 100, for those of you who are first time home buyers or who need a refresher course uh, on home buying, you can do that uh, with the Hill CDC who works in partnership with the Housing Authority and the Urban League on Operation Home Workshops. We have one, one per month uh, and it will be uh, Saturday, February 19th. Uh, and you can register at hilldistrict.org slash register. There is no cost to 
you to attend this session. And for those who are income qualified, it prepares you to qualify for additional subsidy and cash to go towards your home purchase. So uh, if you have not registered, please register. The Hill CDC is very much interested in making sure that you access all of the capital possible to bring um, home prices down even further in terms of what you would have to put in. However, um, there's going to be limited inventory. So I would say get on the list, go to the home ownership, home ownership workshop and be prepared to purchase. Uh, you will find at that workshop that there are also, there's also information from uh, lenders and other people related to the home buying process. Okay. So before I get into Nafasi and hand this over to Jordan to do a Nafasi update, I do want to answer Reverend Snyder's question, um, which was, when is the meeting for choice? Uh, are, are the meetings open to the public? Who is on the team? How can we join? Uh, and he had connection problems. We understand uh, Pastor Snyder. Um, so uh, the meetings for choice, there are multiple and there is a, a pretty extensive schedule. So I would advise you to contact uh, the housing authority specifically, or you can contact the Hill CDC. Um, uh, there are three specific people, Alexis, whose last name I cannot pronounce properly right now, but I will be sure um, to make sure we get that information in the chat. Jordan, if you could drop um, Alexis's information in, in the chat, that would be awesome. And then um, the, the, there are work groups, there's a board meeting, there are public meetings. Um, and so the work groups and the um, and the and the Hill District plans meeting are absolutely open to the public. Um, who can join the team? Those who are interested in the relative topics, which are people, neighborhood, and housing, um, people are able to uh, participate in the work groups. Uh, and again, we understand the connection problems. Now, Allison had a question about are there pictures? I'm not sure, Allison, uh, which pictures you're referring to, but we're happy to get back to you once we. Um, once we know what pictures you're referring to, just clarify that for us. I'm actually chatting with her in the uh, group chat right now regarding it. All right, great. Jordan, you want to cover Nafasi on center? Sure, can you hear me? Uh, I'm in my sure. headphones. All right, cool. Thank you, Marimba, for passing it along. Um, so if everyone has not heard yet, tomorrow, uh, some of our resident artists of Nafasi will, we will be participating in the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust pop-up gallery crawl tomorrow downtown at 807 Liberty. So it's going to be a few different artist groups. It's going to be Nafasi, it's going to be O-Ringer, it's going to be a couple other artists as well. So it's going to be really fun. Uh, downtown Liberty, if you're familiar where like that um, comedy theater is on Liberty. So 807 is directly next to it. You'll go inside, take the elevator directly to the third floor, and then you'll walk in and be in the place to be. So please come out, support Hill District Arts, Black Arts period, come buy some new arts. Everything's going to be for sale mostly. It's going to be fun. All right, thanks, Jordan. Thank you. For those of you who do not remember, Nafasi is the residency um, program that is hosted at 2145 um, Center Avenue, a beautiful building, six artists live there. There's gallery space and community space uh, that um, we hope to transform and activate into also a food space in the near term. Uh, but please do, you know, continue to keep your eye out for Nafasi artists, not just at this gallery crawl, but at all events that we announce relative to Nafasi. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Jordan to frame out the development review panel process, as well as the development activities presentation. Thank you, Marimba. So what is the DRP? If we have, you know, some folks who continue to come to our community meetings, you'll, you know, this might be a little bit refresher. We did notify everyone that, uh, you know, update everyone rather that there were some new organizations joining. So here you'll see all the, the involved organizations here in the um, DRP and what the DRP is, it's the Hill, the Hill District's RCO and we'll kind of get into what the RCO is in a few different slides. Thank you. So what the DRP, this is just a quick review of what DRP has done in the past calendar year. Um, so as a DRP, the development review panel, what happens is any development that comes within Hill District boundaries as the RCO, 
uh, it gets reviewed by this committee that is comprised of multiple organizations, as we saw on the previous slide, to help make sure that a lot of the developments that are coming into the Hill District remain equitable and remain in alignment with the Hill District, the Greater Hill District Master Plan. Uh, so like I said, just some review of what has happened, 12 projects, seven of those approved, really felt to be in alignment with the Hill District Master Plan, three currently under review, a few moving through, we'll see one tonight as well. I mean, you'll see two declined or abandoned, and we really don't like to see that number two, but you know, we really can't force anyone to really participate and understand what it is that we mean with being in alignment with that master plan. And so at that point, you know, some folks, pardon me, decide to continue their projects elsewhere. Um, so as you see, like I said, added three new member membership organizations, and I'm not gonna read it verbatim. Uh, this is kind of a review, so we can go forward. Thank you, Marimba. So as I said a little bit earlier, you know that the DRP is the RCO for the Hill District, and so what that is is the ordinance requires the RCO to establish order, orderly and democratic means for forming represent, representative, sorry, forming representative public input. So what that means is uh, really with that collection of committee ship, committee members, the entire committee reviews these projects and make sure that everything is in alignment, and to make sure that all folks, you know, MBC, MBE ownership as the master plan calls for, and not just ownership as far as the businesses, but ownership in the development projects themselves. Sorry, we could move forward. So just a quick review of two of the newest, so one, uh, that number actually should have been updated, but two of the newest submissions, uh, 2159 Center Avenue, which is going to be a mixed use space directly, 2159, as the name suggests, is the address. It's directly neighboring the library on the intersection of Kirkpatrick and Center Avenue. A lot of activity happening right there, which is good, really good for the neighborhood. Congratulations to uh, Brother Big Tom again on that same intersection. But 2159 by Amani Christian Community Development Corporation, it's gonna be 12 total units. Um, all the units will be affordable at 80% or below. Here you see a breakdown of the different types of units that are gonna be available upstairs. Now it's gonna be uh, four floors, I believe, pardon me if I remember correctly. Um, and that commercial space on the ground level is gonna be 18, uh, 1,800 square feet. Um, and if you wanna learn a little bit more about those details about the use and specific um, aim for the project, just head to its webpage at hilldistrict.org backslash 2159 Center Avenue. And this is just a rendering, as I said, right on that corner. Uh, if you look to the right, mostly where my, I don't know if I remember sharing, can't see my pointer, but that's where the library is, most folks know. And this building in the middle is where it's gonna be. So you'll be able to access front and in the rear. Thank you, Marimba. And one some folks may be familiar with that just had a, another resubmission, uh, official submission to the DRP is the phase one of the bed for choice, which we talked about a little bit earlier, Reed and Roberts. Um, there we go, let her in. So this is from Trek Development. This is phase one of their standalone. So basically with the standalone project, they are implementing this project at Reed and Roberts to have a space to show that they are committed to the entire choice planning. And then thus after the completion of this project, they'll be going through some different phases in order to continue throughout the community. What this is, they have, as you see, committed to 30% MBE, 15% WBE as the master plan calls for. And this project is 125 units. It's gonna be two buildings, um, one, both elevator serve, one building specifically for senior living, that's gonna be one and two bedrooms. And then the other building is gonna be for families, same style, one and two bedrooms. Um, then there will be some townhomes and a little bit lower portion of the site. And those are gonna be for larger families, three and four bedrooms. Uh, they have 86 parking spaces, as you see indicated here. And most of those parking, if I'm familiar, if I'm remembering correctly, is gonna be integrated into the building. So it's really not gonna disrupt too much of the current off-street parking in that area right now. Um, and then below that, you just see a breakdown of what's going on. 75% of the units are affordable, 25% market rate. Um, and that affordability level is 50% to 30%, uh, 50 and lower, 30 to 50% AMI. The project is using a LIHTC, 9% and 4% as well. As I mentioned, parking gonna be integrated into the building. And for more information, just go to hilldistrict.org backslash Reed and Roberts. Sorry, she doesn't care. Uh, and this is just a rendering of kind of where we, you know where that's going to be if you're familiar with Freedom Roberts. This is what they're going to be. And you know, I would like to mention too, if you notice like this lighter shade of building, which was something that you know um, was mentioned, is that it, it tries not to disrupt the rest of the, the building line as with this height and things. So that's kind of like intentional. So that's something to notice about this rendering. Just a fun fact of the evening. 
Jordan, can you speak to really quickly uh, a little bit about uh, where these plans are in the process, let folks know they're under review and that they'll have an opportunity to learn more? Yeah, definitely. So uh, the first one we talked about, 2159, um, Reverend Walls and Amani Christian as still participating in the DRP process. So, uh, you know, at we, have, we put the web, web address there. It kind of breaks down the timeline of as projects move throughout the process. And, you know, once a, pro, a project is there, we continue to update it and you'll be able to know whether, whether or not and when, how the project progresses through the process to this level as August Wilson has tonight. Uh, same with Rita Roberts. Rita Roberts has committed my love, my love, my love. Just give me like two seconds. It's okay, baby. Um, if you can, thank you. Uh, Sorry, Reed and Robert. So they have actually gone through in, in a favorable, favorable standing with the DRP committee. So their next steps is going to be um, responding to some feedback and just a little bit of clarity for the DRP committee. And then they will be presenting at our second quarterly meeting, excuse me, to the larger Thank community. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, and with that, uh, I think we have one more um, slide here just to introduce the August Wilson House. Uh, and then they will be presenting for you all. So Jordan, if you could just go through these and then we'll uh, invite our presenters up. Sure, yes, my love. Sure, so, sorry, yes. Um, so the August Wilson House, well, we're, you know, we're about to have a presentation for. Uh, so really quickly here, just hi what, what is highlighted is uh, the Dam Today Development Activities Meeting was triggered due to the need to engage the Historic Review Commission because of the building itself. The building is a historic building, as many know, and you know some of the site work like sidewalks and fencing and some of that other uh, details that really go into making it a aesthetically pleasing space. In order to do some of that renovations, you need historic review. So that's why we're here tonight, and they're going to give us some great details. Um, now, you know, as you, if you're driving through the Hill District, you see the project has been there for a little while. It has been uh, delayed due to COVID. They are around 60% completion now, you know, site utilities are complete. The remaining site uh, will be submitted. It has been submitted as an amendment to PLI and DOMI. So they're expecting a grand opening this April. It's a really exciting project. Thank you all for participating. Uh, you'll see a little bit of details about the back, uh, back performance space. They'll get into that when they present. All righty, thank you, Jordan. With no further ado, we invite the August Wilson Health team up for their presentation. Uh, as you all know, uh, you will have a limited amount of time to present and we will make sure that Jordan is timing you and giving you cues inside of the chat. Uh, and with that, we will go on ahead and get started. Um, for residents who are participating, you'll have an opportunity to score. You'll see that information at the end of the presentation. Um, and we'll review that immediately upon completion of their presentation. So please, let's get started. If you would just raise your hand uh, so that we know who to unmute. Sorry about that team. <laughs> are we good? Denise uh, and Rob cool. are unmuted. Awesome. Is there Thank anyone you. else yeah. who needs to unmute? unmuted? Yeah, okay, I am now. And um, yes, so uh, George, George Germany is part of our team who will speak, Jennifer, um, Jen Gallagher and Charlene Foggy Burnett. Okay, Thank let's do it <laughs> If you could raise, okay, two participants, let's see. Cool, I got Charlene and... Okay. All right, I think Everybody everyone is unmuted. Good. All right. Okay. Okay. And everyone who knows me knows I didn't do the little hand on the, you know, I'm not that great techno from a technical perspective. So I said, hello. So, you know, wonder what a wonderful time um, to be a resident of um, Pittsburgh, you know, just excited about Mayor Ganey's um, win and Marimba. Thank you so much for you and your team and everything that you're doing for the Hill District. And we are so grateful to be a part of the Hill District community. So August Wilson House um, exists to celebrate a man who has celebrated the Hill District in all of his plays. And we intend to honor his legacy um, by opening an art center um, in memory and in honor of him. So August Wilson House, we exist. There are three um, basic missions that we have. One is to restore his childhood home located at 1727 Bedford Avenue. Our second is 
to um, develop robust community programming, which a lot of people in the Hill District have supported us through. Our block party is one of the largest um, community programs that we have, and we can't wait to get back out there to fellowship um, among you all. We have still done some um, programming in the Hill District, and we're grateful for the partnership. I'd like to just take a moment to acknowledge some of the Hill District um, partners who opened up their um, buildings to us to allow us to operate those programs before our art center opened, like the Blakey Center, the Grayson Center, um, Carnegie Library. We've done things with the uh, Kaufman Auditorium. And so, we, you know, we just appreciate that partnership. The third reason why we exist is to honor um, residencies and fellowships. Much like um, the Hill CDC and a lot of the things that they are doing and a lot of the things that are happening in the Hill District, we are here to celebrate and honor artists as well. Um, and we will do that. We've done that through our programming. Um, Charlene, when she speaks, she can tell you some of the wonderful things that we've been doing. Um, and the, um, the other thing is we have a great, great team that surrounds us. So um, with us today, we have um, Foffman and Associates, Rob, uh, Rob Foffman and um, Vivian Walker. She's an architect with his team. Um, he, he's our lead um, architect and Vivian Walker is our architect um, through him as well. And then we have George Germany and George is through a Martini company. And he, let, let me get his title right. He's the assistant project manager. George lives in the Hill District um, as well. We have Charlene Fogey Barnett. She is a long-term Hill District resident as well. And she is the current community archivist for the uh, Teeny Harris um, collection. And we're really excited about that. And we have um, Jen Gallagher who will speak from Studio for Spatial Practices. Uh, Jen's team has done an, a wonderful job at all of the site work and everything that we have going on. So we have a um, opening planned for April of 2022 where we hope to get back out into the community again with um, some type of a, a block party. We know that COVID has been entirely challenging and we really would have been doing way more community-based um, offerings than we have. But at the end of the day, we're super excited. This art center is for everyone. It's not just for a specific group of people, it's for everyone. And we will have something for everyone, whether you're an older person, a younger person, a student, um, an artist, we are multidisciplinary and we will celebrate um, August Wilson's legacy through the support of all of those people that we just announced. So I'd like to just pass it on to George Germany. And thank you for and, having um, us. While we're here, um, since we're not controlling the advancement of the slides, George, if you can just say next, we probably need to go through a few slides here to get to George's slide. Next. I'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. It's coming up after August Wilson's mission. Right here. This is good. Um, actually, Denise, you can talk a little bit about the funding and then mm -hmm. George can talk about. Sure. So we received um, a, a grant from the A.W. Mellon Foundation to support our um, site work. And right now we have five hundred and thirty five thousand dollars designated for all of the things that are listed um, here for the construction, the paving, fencing, um, landscape theatrical infrastructure, interpretive panels, signage, things of that nature. We are currently undergoing um, an interpretive design um, process internally in the space. And then we have um, esteemed landscape um, architect, Walter Hood, who you all may be familiar um, because he was part of the green print um, for the Hill District. And, um, and so these are the things that we are working on now. Very exciting. We can't wait for you to see the space. And for you to come through in April, we will have a grand opening in August. And so with that, I will pass that on to George. And if we could go to the next slide. Thank you. Brother George, you should be unmuted now. All right, there you go. Thank you, Jordan. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, Thank you, Denise. 
Uh, yeah, the, the project is moving along uh, really well. We're at 60% um, of the project. Uh, just to give you a quick update, uh, a, a really quick, just a, a description of what's happening. Um, all the interior uh, of the building, the two existing buildings, as well as the addition, um, the framing has been installed. 95% uh, of the drywall uh, has been installed. Uh, we're planning on doing um, drywall finishing and taping uh, sometime maybe early next week. Um, we were shooting for this week, but kind of fell behind. But early next week, we're looking to do some taping and finishing. Uh, another key milestone we're looking for uh, or looking forward to um, is on Monday. Uh, you'll see some machinery on site uh, to install some of the steel uh, for the addition. Um, so you're going to set some steel in place on Monday. Um, that will allow us to set the roof um, as well as some of the glass uh, for the addition. Um, that will be taking place on Monday. Um, spoke to the elevator installer. Uh, he's on deck to be ready to go on site and start putting his machines in. Um, painting will hopefully start up pretty soon. Um, but to Denise's point and to Rob's point, um, we're looking at uh, trying to get everything situated uh, for April um, so we can uh, hit those goals and those dates um, and make sure everything is good. Um, but it's a great project. Uh, we're happy to be part of it. Um, and the next slide that's in front of you, in front of everyone right now, uh, is the MBE WBE participation. Um, we handled this a little bit differently. Uh, we hooked up with the organization or a group, good company, Russell Contracting. Uh, we tried to create this more of a of a of a partnership, um, whereas we worked with Russell um, to actually come in. Um, we worked with them early on in the project, um, brought them on board. Uh, they provided uh, uh, their staff and their, and their workforce and their contract uh, included all the framing, carpentry work, flooring. Um, they're doing a great job. Um, we're working uh, with them. They're working with our staff. Um, and we're getting a lot of stuff done. Um, the WBE subcontractor is J&J. Um, we're working with them right now. Um, they're doing a great job as well, uh, but the total value of contracts so far for Russell uh, is one point four or one million uh, for four, forty six thousand six hundred seventy two dollars. Um, J and J is thirty eight thousand five hundred and eighty dollars, which would be a total M and W B E percentage of twenty three percent. And we have over thirty six hundred man hours on the project. Thanks, George. Charlene. Hi, hello everybody. We gotta watch our schedule. We gotta watch our time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna zip through this um, uh, and just bring out some of the highlights of our programs that we've been doing over the years and uh, in the most recent years. So as you know, we've been doing the um, August Wilson block parties on his birthday since early um, in the mid 2000s each April, and that will continue. Of course, it's a Hill District Festival. Uh, we've done, uh, we have outdoor theater productions we've done with Pittsburgh Playwrights Theater, like Seven Guitars, King Headley, Gem of the Ocean. Um, and we're looking forward to a new production expected in summer of uh, this year, actually. We also have August in the schools. Uh, it's a starting pilot phase this winter in 2022. And it's connecting um, August Wilson with costumes and history, uh, especially history of the Hill District, obviously. We've had uh, fellowships, visiting fellowships. Um, we've had a uh, visiting playwright fellowship with Sid Rushing, who did some exciting work with us. And we hope to echo that with the, the kind of people that will be utilizing the house in the future. Um, we have an ongoing um, Actors Talk August with our uh, theater guru, <laughs> Chris Rawson. And he, I could name a thousand names that he's interviewed like Kenny Leon and um, Mark Clayton Southers and Monte Russell and, and, and our uh, Wally Jamal, but just to name a few of the people who are key um, investors in that project with him. And um, we have August in August coming up, a uh, month long daily online celebration, which we kicked off last year. Um, and it kind of came out of the, you know, the need to be creative in the time of COVID. 
and it, uh, the residents and, and the city has fallen in love with it. So we're going to continue it. We have Your Story Matters, the oral history project with the University of Pittsburgh and some digital projects with uh, CMU. And uh, I'm trying to keep it along the Bill Nunn Theater Outreach um, Program, August Wilson Monologue Competition, and um, um, so many things. I don't want to take up any more time because we have some really important stuff to show you about the physical building. But just suffice it to say, there's so many things, so many projects going on, so many programs being planned. So please come out and join us. Thank you. Hello. Well, Thank you, Charlene. Um, we're a little bit behind our slides and we want to respect your time. So why don't we skip ahead a few slides until you get to the uh, drawings for the site work. Um, there's a few more here okay. and one more. Let's keep going. One more. There's Terry. Just want to let people appreciate it, Rob. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Nothing like beautiful slides not being seen. So I just want to let people appreciate oh, it. <laughs> They're better than the drawings anyways. <laughs> this is my favorite picture. Um, I took this with my drone so you could really get a sense of the August <laughs> Wilson house um, in its context. Um, the house you see is actually to the right, um, built in the 1840s by an abolitionist family. And it's um, really an amazing history. When you go through the house, you'll learn a lot about how the house transformed itself over the years. Let's keep going though. Next slide. Um, this is a drawing that we did as, on a walk with Walter Hood a few years back. And this is part of his thinking about the green print with the idea of small green patches, as he calls them, and the idea of enmeshing uh, green space uh, in the hills. So that was an inspiration for us in the site work that we're about to present you today. Next. This is the uh, survey plan. The red dotted lines represent the property that's owned by the August Wilson house. You'll notice in addition to the house itself, there's former housing authority properties and a little row house that we acquired uh, a few years ago. And we're hoping that that will be converted uh, in the next couple of years into a fellowship house. Um, the corner lot is, will be undeveloped for a while until we work, uh, August Wilson house works with the community to figure out a, a future use. But right now we've got a tiger by the tail on the main project. Uh, next. This is the uh, a conceptual the conceptual landscape plan, and I'm going to I think um, flip to the next slide as we go through the renderings and let um, uh, Jen Gallagher from Studio Spatial Practice, who's a partner with Walter Hood, on both the green print and on this project. So go ahead, Jen, and talk us a little bit about the uh, the plan for the backyard. Okay, thank you, Rob. Um, hi, everyone. Nice to meet you virtually. Uh, to keep it quick as well, I'd like to say that um, I mean incredibly grateful to be able to work with Walter Hood again on this project. Um, he was the design landscape architect for this project and came up with an incredible concept that really celebrated um, the history and the bones of what used to be in the Hill District. So what you see here is an aerial view showing the, the house in situ and um, to the side of the house, you can see this um, side yard um, paver grass event lawn area. Um, this is a key feature right here um, because wrapping it, we have an accessible boardwalk. Um, and in later slides, you'll see that there's interpretive panels along the journey. And this journey that follows the um, outline of the property takes you to the rear yard backyard theater in a very graceful and elegant way, allowing us to really retain um, the natural contours of the site because there is a rather significant level change um, to accommodate. We've decided to bring in um, the historic materials of um, herringbone brick pavers uh, along the sidewalk that then also turn and bring you up to the entry where it says welcome on this slide. Um, that is actually an accessible ramp that will quickly take you into um, the entry to the building. Um, holding the sidewalk edge transitioning from where you enter the boardwalk um, are these stone foundation reminiscent of stone foundation walls um, almost matching what's on the building itself um, oh geez I have to hurry uh, but they provide um, these are repeated throughout the site transitioning to the rear yard space too and so they're remnants of buildings that used to be there 
It's the same for these concrete walks um, that also, um, we call them ghost walks, the walk that divides the event lawn. Um, these define parcels that used to exist here. Um, there's a grove, there's a celebratory grove of trees um, and landscape as well that complements the sloped um, nature of the site. Can we go to the next slide? Uh, more there are a bunch of slides here, so we might want to yeah, go through. Yeah, I think we could just keep, yeah. keep going through if we wanted to. Um, maybe one more slide, please. Oh yeah, a bunch. So you can see that the, the um, the brick pavers that turn into the site. You can see how that um, salvaged stone wall actually acts like a stoop so that um, it accommodates people gathering or um, waiting. Uh, next slide, please. I think that's you, Rob. Yep, yeah, sure. Um, so we're gonna uh, try to keep moving here. This is the, um, the, the uh, west side of the house where the glass stair is being built. You can see that now. And we have opportunities for a future art artful and event banner on one side and then a sunscreen in the future. But there's a whole bunch more slides. If you just keep on going, um, we can show you some of the interpretive signage right up, that last one right there. Um, this is a really important part of the project that um, Tesla and Brocade are doing with us. If you go back one slide, um, basically there's, oh, sorry, that's not that one. I think, ah, <laughs> go forward again, uh, the other way, sorry. Keep going, there you go. So there's another little, that's good right there. Um, we're working on a signage package that we'll be submitting to the city. And that's another reason we go to the historic review committee and to the zoning board of adjustment uh, for the signage. Um, so we'll bring back the historic marker and they'll have banners on poles leading you to the sign, the entrance in the, in the back. Um, and then we'll probably have some additional interpretive signage about Bella's market and things like that. Next. And these are just a couple of different alternatives that we're experimenting with on the signage. Um, and I think we can keep going forward. Um, you can see one sign is below and one is above uh, in the traditional sign board. I want to take you to the picture of the backyard so you can see how that's set up with the lighting. Yeah, and this is where we put our tent. If you've been to events there, that's where we raise the tent. And so that side yard plays an important role in, in, in planning for events. Um, as sort of pre-theater as well as other events at, at the site. Um, again, some more views. We probably have too many pictures in here, but we're, we're really, and there's the views of the tent. Um, this is the sign details that we need for the city uh, compliance process um, and for the banners. Uh, all these have to be approved by the city uh, as part of a separate permitting process. Next. Um, again, a couple more views. You get the idea of the walls, stoops, um, we have too many pictures in here. I apologize. Um, again, these are some of the design concepts are still underway. Uh, this is an important one. This is the, um, the one with August Wilson's face. You can see in the distance he inserted into the fence will be a series of uh, six foot panels that will be um, made out of polycarbonate, similar to what he's doing in the um, his other uh, Walter's other project in the lower hill. Um, but the idea is to bring in an artful interpretation. And the first one will, will be designed and constructed by Walter's office. And so that's just sort of a placeholder with his face in there. But that's also considered a sign by the city. This is a detail of the uh, boardwalk that uh, Jen has been working on. Um, there's also a pole you see sticking up there, and that will support theatrical lighting um, that will come on just during events. And one of the things that Denise and I have been talking about is that during events, we'll want to uh, go through the event process so nobody's impacted by parking or noise issues. You know, as you, as you know, when uh, Seven Guitars is there, it was during a, a, a three or four week period. So we want to make sure that we're good neighbors. Next. Um, again, we have more pictures of the outside. Uh, this is an important one. So when you get, you know, the entrance is actually off to the side. And the reason for that is that's where the elevator can reach all of the different floors in the house. The August Wilson apartment is just to the right up those steps, but very often you'll go into the lobby and then up in the elevator into the apartment. And there'll be an interpretive panel, as you can see there, saying all of the art and then a welcome uh, area inside. And you go to left into Bella's Market, which will be a gallery, and then forward into a new studio and the new addition with the bathrooms and, and uh, elevator. Next. This is the view from the back. So you, if you've been to an event there, this is the similar seating uh, arrangement for seven guitars. 
and um, those will be portable bleachers that would put up for the events, um, most likely August and August, where the weather is much better. We had done it a few years ago in April and May and paid for it with rain. Um, but anyways, you can see the boardwalk running around the perimeter, and that's really critical to getting uh, ADA access, make it accessible for everybody. Next. This is just a, a view of the, the, where the lighting angles will be worked by the theater. We're working with um, Clear Story to design the theatrical lighting and Mark Southers has given us input on it. Um, and so we think we're ready to do our performances uh, this summer. Next, another view from off to one side. Um, th this is the, the last thing here will be just give, we want to make sure we give time for the landscape and Jen can quickly go through um, the flowering beds and the trees we have. So this just shows you the locations of, and the types of planting we have. They're all natives, they're pollinators. Um, a lot of them are flowering and there's some of the favorite flowers that were mentioned previously. Um, but basically they'll be low maintenance, they'll help retain the slope as well, which means we won't have hillslides or mud appearing. Um, and they'll be flowering. So there'll be enjoyment and activity and something that's engaging as you move along the boardwalk. Um, there's also, you can see in number four, and it's actually on the next slide, in the um, side yard, um, one of the materials we selected um, as reminiscent of old um, dilapidated houses with the bricks in the lawn, um, we chose these grass pavers in a herringbone pattern, reminiscent of bricks, but they allow us to have lawn there. Um, they're more durable, so they can hold more event traffic, but they also can catch rainwater and um, really do a good job with, oh, sorry, we're up. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I tried. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> well, what we'll do is I, I know that you all uh, tried to do your best to um, to to get it all in the amount of time allocated, and we did extend. Um, but we'll go through the rest of the slides so that the audience can see, and you can address any outstanding right. questions in the Q and A, uh, and we can go yep. back to slides to refer to those if necessary. Yeah, we're almost to the end. Okay. You want to address this? That's one? the last one. Yeah, sure. This is just an example of the theatrical um, uh, staging we'll do in the backyard. And of course, when it's not a theater, we want to have some seating out there so people can go out and enjoy the backyard and have small events. So that's kind of it. I, I do want to last ask one more thing. We had uh, Jerry Brown, who has really been an important partner with us. He's our next door neighbor to the left of the August Wilson house as you're facing it. And he doesn't have a computer and he tried to call in tonight, but he had to leave. But he just wanted to express his support for the project. And it's been fantastic working with Jerry. Great, thank you. Well, make sure Jerry votes. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> all righty. So thank you. This is actually the opportunity for you all to address any matters that uh, you weren't able to address during the presentation time, uh, but we ask um, uh, audience members now, if you have questions, we're gonna be taking questions from Facebook as well. If, if folks are tuned in there, feel free to drop your questions uh, on our Facebook page uh, at hilldistrict.org slash myhilldistrict. Uh, and if you have a question here uh, in Zoom, feel free to drop that question as well. Please raise your hand just to be sure we don't miss you. I almost said Rob has a question. You have one, Jordan? No, I said I almost said Rob has a question. His hand raised, but that's from earlier. Okay. Oh, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's from earlier. <laughs> okay, I'll check Facebook. Um, um, so here's a question. A question uh, here's a question. Where uh, can can we go back to the signage? Um, uh, let's see. Sort of in the middle of the slide deck there, yeah. <laughs> Looks like you froze. Uh oh. Marima, can you hear us? Uh, okay. Looks like we lost her. Yeah, give me a second. I'm gonna. Oh, my God. 
All right, give me like two seconds, and if she doesn't come right back, I'll reshare, and we can continue until she hops back on. All right, I'm going to pull it up now so we can just go ahead and reshare and we'll continue. Really, I guess if there's no, while I am pulling it back up, if there are no additional questions from anyone in the audience, you know, I think I, I, one, one most important part would be to someone from your team to speak about what exactly triggered your review with HRC. Just to give sure. a little bit of detail. Yeah, I'd be glad that. to do that. Yes. Um, so the house was already approved for the construction permit along with the sidewalk and the original historic house was just the one lot of 1727 Bedford Avenue, not all the rest of the land. And so it was interpreted that we needed to go back to the Historic Review Commission for, for basically the brick sidewalk, the fence and the handrails. So um, that's we presented that tonight. Um, you know, it's a standard six foot high fence. We have that unusual lighting pole, which they've approved. Um, we do need to go for a sign variance for the signage because it's an exceptional, uh, it's a use exception in a residential neighborhood. So all of our signs have to be approved through the zoning board. But the HRC was the trigger, as you said, and that's primarily just the sidewalks and the rails and the fence. So we would like to request, uh, respect the request that we could go to the February meeting, then we can keep our project on schedule for the Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, I, and I must say, just kind of a personal note, I really do appreciate the detail that has been taken into the design. You know what I'm saying? Even down to the pavers, you know, like the herringbone. That's really classic Hill District right there. And that's the, I super like that. And the, the utility of the grass pavers as well. When you talked about catching the rainwater, even the comfortability with um, the detail into the risers. Uh, that, that, those, those right. Pretty, pretty we should. Great. We should mention on the bricks and maybe Denise, you want to talk about the brick campaign because people in the Hill may be very uh, interested. In yes, that. I guess just briefly. And, and I apologize. I was so caught into introducing the team um, that I forgot to introduce myself. Um, I'm the acting chief executive and board president of August Wilson House. Um, so we are um, in the process of launching a brick naming campaign designed to allow community members different funders and community partners to be able to purchase a brick on in our space. Um, they can do that to honor a family, a loved one, or just even themselves. And we will be um, launching it in a, a manner that's affordable. So, you know, we will have um, bricks in uh, um, certain levels of, of financial donation. Um, and so, um, so I wanted to also um, mention, so Rob mentioned um, Jerry Brown, who, lives next door. And most of us on here may know Brenda Tate. I want to give a special recognition to Brenda Tate. Um, you know, we are, are also thinking that just for the community to purchase this brick, um, there are certain special people that we would like to purchase a brick for and honor them like Mr. Brown and um, Brenda, for instance. And so there's more to come. Um, we will have that information on our website. And again, you know, people will be able to purchase a brick to honor this um, really important project. We just appreciate the Hill CDC support, all of the um, neighborhood support. And we're so looking forward um, to opening this art space and just, you know, being in community fellowship in honor of a great man, August Wilson. We thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? All right, with that, uh, we'll just remind everyone, first of all, thank you again to our pre presenters. You all did a fantastic job uh, sharing the vision uh, that you've been working on uh, for the August Wilson House. I know that this project has been long uh, in coming and um, so congratulations to your team, uh, to Hill District residents. Uh, a scorecard for August Wilson House is linked to the above website, which is hilldistrict.org slash score. There is room for written commentary as well. If um, uh, Fill out the scorecard if you are a Hill District resident and or two, you digitally view the presentation at this meeting uh, held today. Uh, and we will make sure that this digital presentation for today is shared with Hill District residents for viewing and voting. Scorecards will be re will remain open until 
midnight Thursday, February 3rd, 2022. So please follow along here. Again, follow us on our social media platforms. Make sure that um, the viewing gets in the hands of Hill District residents. And uh, we absolutely look forward to getting back in touch with you all at the culmination of the scoring process on February 3rd. All right. We have a few updates, probably just another um, five or 10 minutes um, on the lower hill, and then we will uh, be wrapping up with Hill Trivia, of course. All righty. <laughs> so a few updates, the Learn of Fun update. Um, wanted to make sure that you all were aware of who makes up the advisory board and what is going to be covered um, under the LERDA fund. The LERDA stands for our Local Economic Revitalization Tax Assistance Fund. And the items that will be covered for the LERDA, uh, which is um, going to be, which is generated through payments from the Lower Hill Development, um, will be uh, workforce development initiatives, job placement programs, MWBE business development initiatives, business counseling services, children and youth education initiatives, mortgage assistance subsidies, rent assistance subsidies, development investments, other wealth build building initiatives and project development within the Greater Hill District. The entities that are on the advisory board, as I mentioned, include the Hill District Federal Credit Union, the Hill District Consensus Group, the Hill CDC, who is co-chair, Wesley AME Zion Church, Shinley Heights Community Development Program, the Historic Hill Institute, Ujima Collective, and ex officio officers are State Representative Jake Wheatley, County Executive Rich Fitzgerald, and City Councilman Daniel Lavelle, who is co-chair alongside myself representing Hill CDC. Um, the um, LERDA Fund is, uh, committee is meeting regularly. Uh, those meetings will be viewable uh, on the URA's website. We will also share that out. Uh, but the focus right now is to make sure that there are policies and procedures in place and that the fund can be impactful for the neighborhood. And so we just wanted to let you know that that work is happening so that when you hear about it, you're not surprised, uh, but we will be keeping you apprised of what's going on there as well. Uh, wanted to draw your attention to, in case you missed, uh, this again is our quarterly meeting. So our last quarterly meeting we covered um, uh, this had not happened yet, so we want to make sure to cover this as well. So the EMC, uh, which is the body that um, essentially governs the implementation of the Lower Hill District a Community Collaboration and Implementation Plan, which is the Community Benefits Agreement, uh, discussed the developments, um, excuse me, uh, held its first public meeting, um, largely at the request of a reporter um, that uh, requested to attend uh, the meeting. And so the Lower Hill Management uh, Panel uh, has had, excuse me, the Executive Management Committee uh, has been meeting. Um, Rich Lord from Public Source attended that. And at that meeting, there was lots of discussion about looking for assurances from the new owners, which is FSG, um, to ensure that they too will fulfill the Community Benefits Agreement. As you all may recall, the development team, Buccini Polling Group and the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, they uh, were to pay $7.5 million for the first phase of development, which is FMB Tower. Um, but we, um, we did fall short $313,000. So we have been trying to get some type of assurances of when they will pay the balance of that $313,000, which essentially was the closing cost. Um, for that transaction. And they asked that the community cover that closing cost, at which time the community advocated for it to not have to close the co closing cost for a deal that it itself had not closed on. So we are still seeking that additional $313,000 because as you all know, $313,000 goes a long way in our neighborhood. And we wanna make sure that we don't just get the one, the 7.187 million, although we are excited to have made, had that deposit, we would like to have the balance of that funding at $313,000. Um, so please do look forward to future public meetings by the with the EMC. Uh, this is a very uh, important body that is um, 
charged with working on behalf of the Hill District community to deliver community benefits. Um, and so uh, please, we encourage you to uh, stay abreast of this topic by following Hill CDC and uh, you know just reading different articles that come out. You can also register for the Hill District's Weekend Roundup at hilldistrict.org uh, slash sign up. And Richard will put that, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Jordan will put that, um, Jordan will put that link in, in the chat. Okay. All right. So what else do you need to know? Well, there were RICP funds, which stands for Redevelopment Assistance Capital Program. Uh, those funds were, um, are distributed by the, the state. Okay. And um, they are very competitive funds and many, many projects compete for them every cycle. Uh, you all may remember that uh, the uh, FNB Tower had previously received a large tranche of funding uh, in prior years uh, and in prior cycles, excuse me. Quite frankly, there were many Hill District projects ranging from uh, Haddad, ranging from Fifth and Dinwiddie, ranging from the New Granada. Uh, it, full disclosure, the New Granada has received RICP funding for RICP funding, which we're grateful for, but we were pursuing an additional four million uh, of funding. Uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of those projects were overlooked, but the Lower Hill project did get another four million dollars in RAC funding. So we are concerned about the investment of our public dollars. These are public funds, meaning that they are sponsored by tax dollars. And our expectation is that these funds will be distributed to the most needy projects that not only have economic impact, but also that are um, looking through a, a community lens and a racial equity lens. And so um, we, we would like to see more distribution for projects that really need uh, a greater investment that are not owned by those who could probably fund that gap themselves. So uh, in this particular case, you all know that this project is owned uh, by, um, by Lucini Polling Group, uh, FMB, as well as the Pittsburgh Penguins. And so, so what, we're, what our charge is to our elected officials is that we wanna see more equitable distribution of RAC funding as well as other public funding. Uh, so with that said, um, we are gonna move forward here and just talk about one last item, which is legislative reapportionment. Uh, perhaps you have uh, been following this issue, but the state of Pennsylvania is in the process of uh, redrawing state lines for state uh, legislative districts. Uh, so that's your state representative, state senator. And so they have redrawn the districts according to the map that you see here. Um, this is where the Hill District line kind of is marked now. You can see that the Middle Hill District and the Upper Hill District have been consumed by the 24th Legislative District. This causes us great concern. Um, the Lower Hill has remained in the 19th Legislative District, which has uh, been represented by Representative Wheatley for the past 19 years. Um, as you know, he is moving over to um, work uh, in the Ganey administration. And so there will be a special election for that seat and a special election for the 24th district, which was formerly represented by uh, Representative Ed Ganey. And, and so what we are concerned about is that by disconnecting the Middle Hill District and the Upper Hill District from the Lower Hill District, that it will negatively impact the community's voice in, um, in issues related to the Hill District. Um, and so uh, the Hill District will be seriously impacted if split, as you see here. Uh, and, we would, and we believe that it will diminish uh, the opportunity for the Hill District to represent itself in an effective manner at state and local levels. Uh, and so we are asking for uh, everyone to follow this issue with us. We will likely be getting in touch with uh, many of you who have registered tonight and on our social media platforms and through our email to ask you to send letters of concern either to us or directly to um, to. Um, to the chairperson of this committee, uh, which is um, Mr. Nortenberg. Uh, and so again, you see that this is the Legislative Reapportionment Commission, uh, a Pennsylvania commission. Um, they are asking for our input. They did have a formal public, uh, public comment period. Um, and although that formal public comment period is over, we do still plan to make sure that our voices are heard. So we wanted to keep you apprised of that issue as well. And at, if there are any questions, we're happy to answer those questions right now uh, because we are gonna close out with Hill Trivia and being social. So are there any questions about the legislative apportionment issue or um, 
or the uh, lower hill. Okay, if not, we are going to close out. So whoever can uh, get to programs at hilldistrict.org with the right answer first is going to win. So the question is, why was Teeny Harris called one shot? Why was Teeny Harris called one shot? So please email your answer to programs at hilldistrict.org. The first correct email received will win. And you will get a $10 credit at Community Cares Cafe, courtesy of the Hill CDC. So get to it. We don't want to delay. Uh, we do want to remind you to be social with the Hill CDC uh, and to join our email list. You can join our email list at um, www.hilldistrict.org slash sign up. Uh, we have over 2,000 residents and stakeholders on that list. You can also follow us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter at My Hill District and LinkedIn. You can just search for Hill Community Development Corporation and this link will come up. So with that, if there are no additional comments or questions, we are going to wrap. I'll give you a couple of couple more minutes and then we're gonna wrap up. I want to once again thank our specialty uh, presenters this evening, the August Wilson House, uh, for presenting to the community. We look forward to getting back to you on behalf of the Hill District community through the development review panel process uh, to, to communicate your scores in the coming week. Jordan, did you want to have, did you have any final comments? Uh, yeah, I just want to really quickly, Reverend Walls in the group chat had said, what is the email for a trivia question? That's programs at hilldistrict.org. <clears throat> And Ms. Denise said, who is taking Jake's spot? There's going to be a special election for that one. There will be a special election uh, for that election. And several candidates have already announced. So um, I'm not sure of the date of the special election, but I believe that they are going to be setting that date soon if they have not already. Cool. Keeping in mind that if the new maps are approved, the Middle Hill District and the Upper Hill District are no longer in the 19th not effective immediately, but come the next uh, election cycle, which will basically be next year. Yes, it's in April. I don't have the exact date, but we'll be sure to get that out. All righty. If there are no other questions, we're going to wrap. We thank you all for coming. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Yeah.